Grizz Nation, it is time for another Grizz Game Day update. And the Grizzlies are finally back home after the longest road trip of the season, looking to get back in the win column. They are 20 and three when they play at home. And tonight they will tip off at 5 p.m. at FedEx Forum. Joining me to talk about the Indiana Pacers coming to town is Scott Agnes. Again, second time this month. You ready for this one? I am. Let's do it. Good to be back with you as always. Yes. Okay. So the last time we played, the Pacers was January 14th. So like less than two weeks ago, the Grizzlies won that one, 130 to 112. And it seemed like everything that you said was going to happen, happened other than the fast break points. So the Grizzlies and the Pacers are one and two in the league in fast break points, but they outscored the Pacers 38 to 13. What do you remember about that game? That just was not like the Pacers identity. Yeah, that was right at the start when Tyrese Halliburton was out. So yeah. right then, the team's still very much trying to figure out their new role, who steps up, who takes over. So I remember it very much being a, a feeling it out situation. And since Tyrese has been out, by the way, they've only won one game. So they're still in that mode. They're, that's the biggest struggle right now is they're without their leader. They're without their biggest contributor. They're without the assist leader. Uh, Pacers love to run, as you alluded to. He's the one that leads that charge. And so that's the rut right now more than anything that the Pacers are in. Now, T.J. McConnell is a, a good backup point guard. Mm -hmm. and he's doubled his minutes, and he's scored in double figures in nine of the last ten games. But he's nowhere close to what Tyrese Halliburton was. So that's, that is where you start with this game. And then the other big thing I always remember is I think Memphis, very good first quarter team. Mm -hmm. This is where the Pacers are, quite honestly, losing games. They gave up 46 points last game to Milwaukee. And Milwaukee had 50 on the uh had scored uh 50 points against them earlier in the season, but um then they gave up 45 in that second quarter. So you get to halftime and you're like, what are we doing here? We've already been down 29 points. And to their credit, they outscored the Pacers outscored the Bucks by 19 in the second half, but they're just in too big of a hole. And so that's the issue. Not only are they losing first quarters, Kelsey. The last, I think, four games have been by double figures in the first quarter. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, the first quarter scoring um, when they played the Grizzlies two weeks ago was uh, 36 to 28. So they found themselves yep. in that hole uh, right then. I think one of the biggest differences, and you mentioned McConnell, sorry, not being, you know, like Tyrese Halliburton, who's like the star. He also almost had a triple double against the Grizzlies. So that says that says a lot about him, but it does say a lot about the hole that they're missing in Tyrese. Um the Grizzlies missing a couple of guys tonight too, which could be a big, a big hole. Do I just keep saying that these mm -hmm. guys are leaving big holes, I guess, in the starting lineup. Desmond is doubtful for tonight. Um, he had a big game last time. He had 25 and eight. And Steven Adams ha also had a, a pretty good game. He almost had a double-double, 10 and nine. He's out tonight because um, he will be out for the next, but I guess, three or three, four or five weeks. Um, those are two guys that, the Grizzlies rely on a whole lot too. And I know we talked about um, the mismatch that Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr. bring when they play against this team. What's it look like now without him? Yeah, I think number one, your your rebounding advantage is less because Pacers are an awful rebounding team. And so you could go ahead and almost chalk up Steven Adams 12 rebounds, mm -hmm. right? I like that, especially in this matchup, um, if not every game. But and then Bain, <laughs> one of the Pacers' weakest spots is out on the wing. And so it does not surprise that, you know, he went off against them. Also coming back here to Indiana, he had 250 fans in the stands. That was a special game for him uh, back here in Indy. But without him, it's just another weapon down. But the thing from outside is it feels like Memphis does have a players that they can kind of reload and, and insert in there. And while it may not be equal, it's, it's very close. And that's why Memphis, in my mind, is a championship contending team. Yeah, Santi, I mean, will play a big role. He had 17 uh, in the last game that they played, Brandon Clark was starting now yeah. in place. Um, he had, I think, 11, but there was six guys in double digits, including Jaron, who had nine or not including him. So there was almost seven guys. Um, but when we talk about the Grizzlies, we talk a lot about their defense and against the Pacers, they held them to 37% from the field, 23% from the three. Is that, it can't be normal for the Pacers. Was that just good defense? Was it just a, an off night? Was it the finding what, like their, their, groove without Tyrese because both these teams are top 10 scoring. Yeah. Scoring really has not been an issue. I think it's more defensively. And yeah. then because they weren't getting stops, 
defensively, guess what? They weren't getting out in the fast break. And therefore, those are the high percentage shots. So Mm -hmm. it's all a trickle-down effect. This team is not worried about scoring or where the point's going to come from, even with Tyrese out. But uh, really, over this last two-week stretch without Tyrese, they've had two or three games that have been their lowest percentage shooting um, without him. And and I think that's a, a direct correlation as they try to adapt. And you've had guys from the Pacers try to step up. Benedict Matherin, one of your favorites, and he's had 20, uh, four straight games with at least 20 uh, points, so probably looking for something like that again. Uh, Chris Duarte had a big game against the uh, yeah. Grizzlies last time, and that was his really his best game in quite a while because he had missed six weeks with an ankle injury. He's starting to find his groove in double figures for the last three games, um, but it, right now the Pacers are just – it's, it's weird. They're only down – really Halliburton and maybe a player or two else, but it's just such a significant hole to go back to that. Like it, it's a lot for them having to under overcome. And so they've slid from, you know, sixth to 10th in the Eastern conference standings just in the short time. My last question to you is um, a thing that the Pacers are so good at. And that is points in that second unit coming off the bench. They had 66 in the last game. Um, that was 66 of a total like the team scored 112. So like a huge bench performance and they are real. They're a good bench team. They have a guy who at the time was the top bench scoring guy in the entire league had a big game against us. Is that still something that they can rely on? It is. Although with, with guys, yeah, with the rotation being altered, for instance, TJ McConnell was in that backup unit and kind of the key cog of the second unit. Now he's having to run the first. So that second in my mind's not quite as efficient as it was, um, Duarte, he's starting. It will be Matherin coming off the bench. Uh, the Pacers still trying to figure out their big situation. They have a, a log jam of bigs. Uh, they started the season with Jalen Smith starting at the four. Now it's basically him and Isaiah Jackson alternating each game. Who's the backup five? So that's inconsistent minutes, which has led to inconsistent production. So outside of Matherin, He's the big reason why you reference those those bench points. Yeah, he, and look for him to try to get ten free throw attempts. Like that's one of his best attributes that maybe goes under the radar for people not watching the Pacers. Is not only is he scoring, but he's attacking. He's fear. He's not. Yeah, he's fearless. And so you know, Adams being out there, even if he um, was playing, that wouldn't concern him. He's going to go right at him and try to attack him. But uh, that's what the Pacers will try to lean on. They're slow starting, both in terms of. Uh, the team and three point shooting, but if they can kind of get in a rhythm midway through the game and not be too far behind, then maybe they can make it interesting. All right. Let's hope for an interesting one tonight. It is, I mean, the Grizzlies fans haven't had a home game in almost two weeks. So we're going to be excited no matter what. Like I said, this is a little bit early because it's Sunday. Tip off is at 5 p.m. Central Time. If you're watching here, if you're getting to the arena, get there nice and early. Stay dry. I think it looks like it's raining outside. Scott. Thank you so very much again. Oh, it's our last regular season matchup. That's right. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Grizzlies fans, you can watch this one on Valley Sports Southeast and the Valley Sports Plus app.